In this nugget, we're going to realize a paradigm about our Exchange 2016 environment, and that is that planning really is the complex part. Once we go to implement our solutions, it's quite simple in Exchange 2016, and we'll see that for sure in this nugget as we create and configure mailbox databases. Of course, there's mainly two ways to go here, a graphical user interface and then the command line. Let's start with the GUI. Notice I've gone into my Exchange server that I've got nestled in Azure. And notice at the browser, I can go to local host because I'm on that local host system. You do forward slash ECP in order to get to the Exchange Admin Center. Once there, we're going to log in with our administrator account and password that we created, and then we'll be ready to create the mailbox database. To do that, we're going to go to the servers node and then up to databases. It's that simple. Notice we have the plus symbol here to create a new mailbox database. Notice there's already our default mailbox database that has been created for us. We can see that that is having a name of mailbox database followed by some numbers. And notice an important thing to look at here with your mailbox database is their status, whether or not they are mounted. So when we create a new mailbox database, we're going to have the ability to check or uncheck this mount this database checkbox. This is very important because we have to remember we do have limits on mailbox databases based on our addition of Exchange 2016 and mounting or not mounting is a key to this limitation. For example, with the standard edition, you can have five mailbox databases mounted. With the enterprise edition, you could have a hundred. So whether or not the database is mounted is very important. So under mailbox database, I will give a name here. It's great to come up with some type of a naming convention for this, obviously. We might do exchange MB for mailbox database as a prefix. Then I might do an underscore and we'll call this one test one, for example. For server, we can just hit browse and we know we're going to select this local server. Note if we have more servers in the infrastructure, we could choose a different server there. And then you're going to be filling in the database file path and the log folder path. We know that placement of these databases is going to be really critical, right? Where we put the actual database and the transaction log is critical as we discussed. So I'll choose save and we should get a warning because we have to restart the information store uh, service as you're going to see in a moment. So there we go. It says, all right, please restart the Microsoft Exchange information store service on this system after adding the new mailbox database. So this is something that we would want to do in a maintenance window because when we restart that service, there's going to be a very short little time period where mail could be unavailable. Now, I am not going to restart that service just yet because we're going to add another mailbox. And as you might expect, we're going to do this using a commandlet inside of our Exchange Management Interface. So we're going to use the new mailbox database commandlet. And notice there are two required parameters here. We need to name the mailbox database, of course, and we need to indicate the server that it is going to live on. Now, notice the additional optional parameters we could provide. And a couple of these are super important, aren't they? One of them would be the database file path. The other would be the log folder path. So this is how we can set those locations with the commandlet. So let's try our commandlet approach. I'm going to go into our server and under the Microsoft Exchange Server 2016 grouping, I'm going to choose the Exchange Management Shell and that launches on our system like so. And based on what we just learned from our syntax, we should be able to do something like this. We should be able to say new mailbox database, and then we should be able to say name, and we'll give it a name. This is an exchange mailbox database underscore. We'll give this a name of test two, and the only other required parameter was for us to give the Exchange VM name. That's the name of our server, EXVM. Hit carriage return, and this should work, placing the transaction log 
and placing the database itself in the default locations. Once again, we get our warning about the information store service ne needing to be restarted, but this did appear to work just great. And of course, we can test that by refreshing our GUI. So let's slide over to the GUI. We'll do a refresh and there is that second database. And we notice that when we create it in the very simple way we did, just providing the name and server parameter, it's not going to be mounted. So this leads us to the editing of a database. Notice we're going to be able to edit a database very easily in the graphical user environment. For example, I can highlight this database and just go up to our pencil here in order to edit its parameters. Now, when you look in here at the parameters you can edit, you'll notice the status of mounted can't be changed, however. So when it comes to editing, we've got the maintenance area, we've got limits, we've got client settings, but sometimes we are gonna have to use a slightly different graphical user interface approach to get the edit that we need. In this case, the mounting and unmounting is a configuration parameter stored right here. So we'll click the ellipses, we'll choose mount, we'll say yes, we want to mount that database, and it should update our view here and show us a status of mounted after a moment, and there we go. Now notice this time we didn't get the warning about the information store, so we still need to do that step, and I will show you that step. Something else that I wanted you to be aware of is the fact that we can also manipulate the settings of the database at the command line, and this wouldn't be the new mailbox database command we would use. We would now use the set mailbox, and we can use tab autocomplete here, database, there we go. So there is this command that we could utilize, the set mailbox database command, in order to manipulate the many parameters that exist. Look at this syntax when it comes to one of your mailbox databases. So we've got our mailbox databases implemented. We know how we could manipulate them using the graphical user interface or the command line. Let's finish up by going to tools, services, and inside the services applet, we're gonna scroll down because we're gonna see the Microsoft Exchange Information Store. We're gonna right click it. We're gonna stop it. And of course, we could automate this with PowerShell at the command line, by the way. And then we're going to start this service. So it stops and starts very quickly. One of the things that it's doing is it's looking at your number of mailbox databases, and it is appropriating resources across them appropriately. That is one of the things that this restart is going to do when it comes to our new mailbox databases. So let me close this up. And we have done it both graphically and at the command line when it comes to these new mailbox databases. Certainly planning for things like volume size and planning things like transaction log location and things of that nature, that's the complex business here when it comes to actually getting things implemented as we've seen it is really, really simple and straightforward. I hope this nugget was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.